Thanks for watching County Report this week. I'm Susan Kennedy. We start this time with a recommended plan that would revise the boundaries of the five county council districts. The plan is based on results from the latest census numbers and would go into effect for the 2014 council election. A charter provision requires the boundaries of council districts be reviewed every 10 years. Council members told us what they thought of the commission's recommendations. They have come forward with a map that they believe is appropriate for our county, that's contiguous, that meets all the legal tests, and we're at the very beginning stages of this. They've done their work. There will now be a public hearing on it, and then our council will vote on it in a couple of months. So I think from this plan, it actually is going to be good, because now you have a representative that you know knows all of your issues, is able to and has the time to be deeply involved in what's going on in your community, and I think that serves all of our communities very well. Online higher education courses are the window to the 21st century as students prepare for careers in fast-growing industries. Recently, Kaplan University opened the doors to its Rockville Learning Center. It's a facility where students there can receive face-to-face -face assistance. Lorna Virgili was there for the ribbon cutting. Lorna? Susan, here in the heart of Rockville, Kaplan University has opened its learning center to assist the 800 online students that take classes in the state of Maryland. One, two, three. Right. It's official. Kaplan University opened its sixth learning center in the country, and it is in Montgomery County. We have tremendous need. That need is something that you can fulfill. That need requires us to work with our employers to ensure that those who want jobs the opportunity to expand and grow, that you can fulfill that. Kaplan University serves 46,000 online students nationwide, 100 of them in the county. The online programs provide flexibility for students and offer several types of degrees. We understand that learning online may be new to many students, and the Rockville Learning Center provides extra face-to-face -face support it helps to prepare them for a successful experience online. The Learning Center has classrooms to provide a more traditional school environment for those new to online education and also provides on-site advisors. Admissions advisors will talk them through the different program offerings that we have here at Kaplan. Uh, academic advisors can talk to the curriculum, the courses that they will be taking and how long their program will be. Uh, and then financial aid advisors will walk them through paying for school, more, what options are available. Here you have a tremendous opportunity to bring everything that is great in education right to the fingertips of individuals. For more information about courses, visit kaplanuniversity.edu. For County Report This Week, Lorna Virgili. The Rockville Summit is happening Tuesday, October 18th at VizArts in Town Square. It's an exciting new event sponsored by the City of Rockville and it's hoped to start a dialogue with all the stakeholders about the city's economic future. Our Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer has more. Bridget? That's right. Tough economic times requires creative thinking. That's why the Rockville Summit was formed. It's bringing the public, private and educational sectors of the city together to discuss Rockville's economic future. The Rockville Summit is a merging of two proposals that came out of the council. Uh, months ago, I proposed that we have a summit of community stakeholders. The summit is meant to start a dialogue with anyone who cares about Rockville's economic future. Representatives of residents and community associations, representatives of the business sector, representatives of the nonprofit sector, and of course the public sector, city staff and city management. Um, and then thrown in that mix, representatives of Montgomery County College, which is a big educational sector. The Rockville Summit Roadmap for the Future is a free half-day event happening at VizArts in Town Square, where economist Dr. Stephen Fuller will present his study of Rockville's economic competitiveness. So we've, we've tasked him to do a written economic analysis, sort of a competitiveness study of where Rockville is now and what sort of things might help us go further or prevent us from going further. Um, he will present that as a written document as one step of his study. Um, he will be the keynote address at the summit. That, that'll kick everything off and sort of frame the discussion among the stakeholders. 
Washington Post columnist Robert McCartney will serve as moderator for the Rockville Summit. McCartney, whose column appears every Thursday and Sunday in the Metro section, will oversee the dialogue and help guide the discussions with the panelists. Made up of former mayor and division chief of the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission, Rose Krasnow. Montgomery College Vice President and Provost Judy Ackerman, representing residents, West End Citizens Association President Susan Prince, the executive director of the Mental Health Association of Montgomery County, Sharon Friedman, will represent the nonprofit sector. And for the business sector, Tower Company's executive general counsel, Arnold Cohn, will have a seat on the summit panel. Councilmember Britton's goal for the event? To get together and share perspectives about um, economic development, um, um, growth of the city, the direction of the city. The ultimate goal is the betterment of our community through the participation, the full and early participation of all these sectors. I mean, you know, um, a, 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 the acceptance of a business activity early on without conflict and the partnership between public, private, nonprofit, and the education sectors um, can, can only help the community. And we have to be very careful in these economic times that we develop our revenue in a smart way and continue the level of services that we have. Go online to rockfilmd.gov and search Summit to register for the free event happening Tuesday, October 18th at 8.30 a.m. at Viz Arts in Town Square. Montgomery County officials join millions across the country in the annual Walk to School Day event. The ceremony is designed to promote safer streets, healthier habits, and cleaner air. County Executive Ike Leggett and Councilmember Hans Reamer joined Superintendent Dr. Joshua Starr at Captain James E. Daly Elementary School to kick off the event. The school was presented with a certificate for the reduction in carbon emissions they achieved by participating in Walk to School Day. Well, there's a very important message here this morning. That is that we want you to be safe. Uh, we want you to enjoy school. And we want you to participate and to make certain that all of you look out for each other because it is important that we enhance safety. This is why so many people are out here today to demonstrate our love and our commitment to you and to make certain that you have a safe environment. Council President Valerie Irvin traveled to Washington, D.C. this week to stand for nearly 12,000 of our region's office cleaners. Contracts for those workers expire on the 15th of this month, and those workers are calling for a fair contract for these jobs that they say are essential to our communities. Well, we're all a soldier in the fight for workers' rights against corporate greed. There is nothing more important than what we're doing today to raise our voices, all of us in unison, that this has got to stop. So I am here, coming all the way from Montgomery County, to stand with you in solidarity for your fight. So thank you very much for having me here. Thank you. <laughs> They're in a contract uh, fight with the uh, with the employers who will not uh, give an inch on whether or not these employees get to uh, become full time. They're asking for the ability to have health care coverage. I am always called on uh, in times like these to lend my name and my voice in support of working families. Twice a year, the council receives a semi-annual report of the planning board, which lays out the proposed work program for the board. Planning officials were on hand at this week's council session, where they outlined the major planning and parks issues that are before them. Some of the things we're doing, like the bus rapid transit study, just letting people know what that study will do and what it will not do. And that's important to get those expectations out early. And then in part and parcel of that, some of the things we've done to help us with future master plans and current ones about how we stage development. So linking development to certain infrastructure changes like community facilities, transit or roadways, so that we can phase our development so we don't overwhelm a community with certain things. Still ahead on County Report this week, get your pen and paper out because we are going to have some important information for you regarding voter registration. And a well-known jazz singer pays a special visit to Blake High School. We'll be right back. Welcome back to County Report this week. Faculty from Montgomery College are participating in the 2011 Taipei World Design Expo. 
This international exhibit features art from all over the world, and one Montgomery College professor played a big role in the event. The executive branch of the Taiwanese government has designated 2011 as Taiwan Design Year. Artists from around the country gathered at Montgomery College recently for a press conference and reception leading up to the Taipei World Design Expo International Craft Design Exhibition. Uh, much of craft media today has been, in my view, uh, hijacked to perform uh, the, the service of art, and that is it's non-functional. And uh, the, the idea of craft as, as being associated with utility or, or usefulness, I think, is very, very important. You see that even in high technology. Look at the iPad, a beautiful object that is eminently useful. Uh, and the, 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 the concept of function uh, uh, has never been an impediment to beauty. Featuring art from all over the world, the Expo's American Pavilion is curated by Montgomery College professor Camilla Hongja Okim, a world-renowned metalsmithing artist. I'm so happy for this today, and I'm happy to Dr. Chang for making this event uh, possible, and I'm very happy for Montgomery College. <laughs> Maybe I, I want to say how great this country is. Okim will be in Taiwan for the duration of the expo, which runs from September 30th through October 30th. But the crafts are not irrelevant. The crafts are not a barnacle on the ship of the world. We are contributing members. We are people that can help to evolve into the future, which has now become the present. It is estimated that over 3,000 professionals of 60 countries will be participating in these design events taking place in Taiwan attracting over one million visitors. Montgomery County Police are investigating an attempted sexual assault that took place earlier this week in Silver Spring. Captain Paul Starks from Montgomery County Police is here to give us the details. Captain, what happened here? Well, Susan, on Sunday, October 2nd, a 56-year-old woman was in her kitchen in her home in the 9400 block of Saybrook Avenue in Silver Spring. She reported that a Hispanic male came in through the kitchen door, physically attacked her, attempted to sexually assault her, and then ran out of the house. Investigators worked with her and were able to develop a computer-generated composite, which we have released along with details of this crime. Should we call the Crime Solvers number if we have any information on this case? Absolutely. For those who wish to remain anonymous and be eligible for a reward, they can call Crime Solvers and let them know anything they may know about this crime. Okay, and we also want to talk a little bit about how the police department is uh, using another method to get information out about what's happening um, with Montgomery County Police. Tell us about your latest endeavor. Recently, we've uh, retuned our Facebook page. It is now Montgomery County Police Department, parentheses, official. And from that page, residents can like us, be notified of current events and crimes such as the one I just spoke about. From that page, they can also follow the Twitter feed. Okay, another great way to stay in touch and get information about what's happening. Thank you very much. Captain Paul Starks, Montgomery County Police. Our next story takes place at James Hubert Blake High School in Silver Spring, where many students focus their studies in the arts. Students at Blake High School received inspiration and training when an award-winning jazz artist visited their school. You're gonna love me like nobody's loved me. Jazz vocalist and six-time Grammy Award nominee Nina Freelon conducted a Songwriting 101 workshop for Blake students. Ms. Freelon sang and shared performance techniques with students and spoke candidly about the realities of pursuing an artistic dream. I think um, our young people need to know that there are adults in their world who think that what they are doing is amazing and wonderful and that a life in the arts can be difficult, it can be a challenge, but um, it's totally worth it. Ms. Freelon emphasized the importance of education to develop the skills and experience needed for success as an artist. And I use the analogy of a train. 
you get on the train one day. The, the day you give yourself permission to do what you love, you get on the train. You get a ticket, you take a seat. And the next stop is work. You're working on your skill set. You're working on you know, the things that you know how to do well. So we're on this train, the train that says, I'm going to be dancer, singer, actor, actress, whatever. And then you get off at a stop that says, apply to college. Well, she basically said, you can want to do this, but if you're not ready to do it, then you really don't want to. It really doesn't matter. You know, you have to be prepared. You need to follow your dreams, but you have to be ready as well. From today's workshop, I just realized that I should just follow my dreams no matter what and just do what I want to do and what makes me happy. The county will be holding voter registration drives on three Saturdays coming up in November. The drives will be held at local public libraries in different parts of the county from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. each of those days. When we come back, we'll bring you a story about a local organization that's giving the less fortunate a new set of wheels. And Montgomery College hosts some special guests. Keep it here on County Report This Week. Welcome back to County Report. Montgomery College routinely welcomes visitors and gives tours, but recently they had some very special guests. Well, good morning, everyone. Namaste. As part of a grant from the Bureau of South and Central Asian Affairs at the U.S. Department of State, a delegation from three colleges in India visited Montgomery College to learn about community colleges and to discuss the challenges and successes of a community college education. College leaders and the U.S. State Department's Dr. Molly Tees kicked off the week-long visit at the Germantown campus. Uh, we have the secret in the United States. It's called community, uh, community colleges. For both of our countries, providing real-world, work-based experiences is not just the right thing to do. It's an essential responsibility to preparing young people and adults to be active citizens in the global economy. The grant also funded MC's coordination of the National Community College Symposium held in New Delhi last March. While in India, the MC team toured Indian institutions and shared ideas discussions which continued throughout their visit to MC. We are trying to first give them a, a, an understanding of complete community college system. What does it mean to be an open access institution? What does it mean to say that no one is denied admission? What does it mean to say that no one is denied any opportunity? While general education and student support attracted attention at the beginning of the visit, the delegation's pointed interest in programs that can help India develop a skilled workforce was obvious. The focus is on the trades. So for us, it's the automotive department, construction trades, construction management, etc. But the idea is to get a flavor for how the community college works as opposed to some of the colleges that they have in India. And we will definitely we will try to improve our standard in India and we will try to establish such type of huge workshop so that we can train our uh, youth who are employed and so to ensure a regular employment for them. There's a lot of collaboration that's going to happen in the future, and we're building partners, we're building friends, we're making friends. Bikes for the World is a nonprofit organization that seeks to put old bikes to productive use. We recently spent some time with the folks who run Bikes for the World as they prepare to send a shipment of these donated bikes overseas. Hey, Nick, we have to inventory. So Keith Oberg is the ultimate collector. I think we have about 500 to 600 bikes in the barn, and uh, they really compact well. But this mass collection of pedals, spokes, and wheels in King Farm in Rockville is for a good cause. Bikes for the World. Oberg is head of Bikes for the World. A nonprofit organization. Their mission is to send unwanted bicycles to low-income communities in Latin America and other countries. I spent 25 years traveling to Latin America and seeing people walking miles and miles and miles to get to work, to get to school, uh, uh, to deliver health services, health workers in rural communities that were going around weighing babies and doing immunizations uh, would walk door to door. And having a bicycle would double and triple their efficiency. 
Last year, 10,000 bikes were donated to Bikes for the World. They are collected from different sites in the Washington area. We work with about 100 community organizations. We work with, here in Montgomery County with a number of Boy Scout troops. My name is Tyler Rodriguez and I am doing an Eagle project. Here. I'm expecting at least 50 um, and if I get more than that, I would be totally happy with what, what I, I have accomplished today. I've got three bikes, um, my daughter's bikes, and uh, they've, they're now 17 and 15. These have been sitting in the garage, so I'm happy to donate them to the Boy Scouts. Uh, thank you for donating. Sure. Tyler Rodriguez and Troop 457 will send their collection of bikes to King Farm, where the bikes from all the sites will be hauled away by a 40-foot truck. Oh, nice. <laughs> We make three levels, eight rows. We average about 20 bikes a row, that's 480 bikes. We're trying to inspire other people and build a movement of recycling and of you know, enjoying bicycles and making a contribution, very tangible con contribution to sustainable transportation and to the environment and to recycling and reuse. <laughs> and Steely Dan to boot. You dirty work. Oh. It may be a lot of work to send these bikes off to other countries, but it's the kind of dirty work that Keith Oberg loves. If you have a bike you'd like to donate, or for more information on this organization, visit bikesfortheworld.org. Every October, the Bethesda Urban Partnership sponsors the famous food and music festival offered by Bethesda's local restaurant community. Obi Wobe was at the event this past weekend despite the cold weather and pouring rain. Despite the dreary weather, Montgomery County residents came out in mass numbers to celebrate the annual Taste of Bethesda. The Taste of Bethesda draws a crowd of over 40,000 people each year showcasing nearly 60 restaurants and four stages of entertainment at Bethesda's Woodmont Triangle. Admission to the event was free. Tickets were sold on site to taste different foods. A serving cost $5 for four tickets. Good chance to taste everything at one time while not going to each individual restaurant. And I mean, she's in town visiting, so it's a good, good taste of something in this bad weather. According to the Zagat Restaurant Guide, the down economy has made dining out more affordable. Economy has affected us as far as the volume, but uh, in a way it helped us to be more creative in uh, designing our menu uh, and come up with a better menu items uh, to invite our guests to try us out. The restaurant industry employs nearly 10% of the U.S. workforce at 12.8 million this year making it the second largest private sector employer in the U.S. If you're, I'm a local, I've been coming to this since it started, um, and I've always wanted to be a part of it, and, and when we were given the opportunity to be a part of it, I, I jumped in and got the team together, the same guys that worked it last year. And if you miss the food on great restaurants, there's always next year. Check out the Bethesda Urban Partnership website for more information. Up next on County Report this week, Kathy Stanhope will be here with our Pet of the Week. Stay with us. Fall is officially here and that means it's mom season. Our friends at Brookside Gardens have some tips on keeping your moms healthy and colorful for the season. It's the perennial question, what do you do with your moms? Are they going to survive the winter or not? Should I plant them or just enjoy them in their pot? So many of us buy mums in the fall because we just love the bright color and that wonderful rounded shape that you see in the mums in the garden center. And if that's why you want a garden mum, just for the color and the shape, then just buy your mums every fall and don't worry about planting them in the ground or trying to get them to come through the winter. Just enjoy them in a container by your door or on your deck or in the garden if you want to, but don't worry about whether or not they come back in the spring because when they come back in the spring, they're not gonna look 
like this beautiful rounded dome of color. They're gonna look different than they do when you buy them in the garden center. Just remember to keep them well watered. On a sunny day, they could use water almost every day because generally garden mums are filling their pot with roots and their flowers are 98% water. So they're just gonna suck up the water. So give them water every single day when it's sunny. And when they get cold or they turn brown, be done with it, add them to your compost pile and think about uh, what color scheme you want for next year. In our Pet of the Week segment, Kathy Stanhope has a nice dog named Tramp who is looking for a new home. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society and I'm here with Tramp. Tramp is a very nice pit bull. Some people are really afraid of pit bulls and you really shouldn't be. Remember the little rascals? Petey on the Little Rascals was a pit bull, and remember how wonderful he was? Well, Tramp is every bit as wonderful, if not more so. He likes to be pet, he likes strangers, he likes everyone he meets. He's only nine months old, so he's still a puppy, so he could really do with a little obedience training, but he's doing well. He's learning how to play fetch. He's short hair, so he won't shed a lot. He is a nice, energetic dog. He likes to play. He's kind of like the perfect all-around pet because he really likes other dogs. He's actually very calm, so you really don't have to be afraid of this particular pit bull because he's just a nice guy. Come on in and meet Petey. And also remember, we do need volunteers at the shelter. We need donations of towels and blankets. We need people to come on in and walk the dogs. And also in, on October 22nd, we are having our Love Ball. It's an annual event. It's a dinner, cocktail party reception. And what makes it so really special is you can bring your dog to the event. So it's a lot of fun. Everybody who goes loves it every year and tries to get back, so we're selling tickets now. Go to the website, mcumaine.org, and find out more information about the Love Ball, and also go to the website and find out more information about Tramp here. He's a great guy. He really would be a good pet. Give us a call at 240-773-5967, or like I said, find out more information on the web at mcumaine.org. And finally, the council will be holding its second teen town hall meeting on Wednesday, October 12th. Young people of all ages are encouraged to come and ask the questions about their county and the issues that matter the most to them. Well, that does it for this edition of County Report this week. Be sure to tune in again next week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. Thanks for watching. Students from MC's Interior Design Program contributed their talents to the annual historic Ellicott City Showhouse Holly Manor. The MC design team created an environment for the master bedroom hall. The showhouse is open through October 23rd. MC will hold a multi-ethnic student academic award ceremony on Friday, October 14th at Globe Hall on the Germantown campus. The event will honor more than 800 students who have achieved a 3.5 GPA or higher. Reflections, Mentor and Protégé, the work of William B. Adair and his mentors at the Cultural Arts Center on MC's Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus through December 19th. The exhibit features the art of Adair, a master gilder, and works by his former MC and University of Maryland professors. For more information about the endless possibilities at your community college, visit our website.